Good afternoon, dear colleagues. My name is Artemy Plekhanov. I and my colleague and co-author Vsevlody Harasimov led to present you our paper Imagine the Post-Soviet Routine, Fantasy and Nostalgia in Russian Comics. And uh, we want to talk about embodiment of nostalgia, reflection and memory about the Russian 90s in area of Russian-made graphic novels. As Olga Malinova works demonstrate, this period has been activity used, actively used and mythologized by various political actors. So we decided to analyze the memories and remembrance of 90s made by author whose growing up happens to be in this decade and who late has embodied their reflective nostalgia in graphic novels and comics. We argue the most important figure of this both literary and graphic works is the spirit of nostalgia. At the same time, authors' individual narratives mage with the already existing set of images and patterns from within Russian pop culture. Therefore, we are witness, witnessing a complex dialogue between the an individual biographies and memories of 90s and nationwide social memory. So, in this paper, we use Svetlana Boim understanding of nostalgia like nostalgia is about relationship between individual biography and biography of groups or nations between personal and collective memory. The most important things uh, that we can see in um, Russian comics uh, in sphere of reflective nostalgia, it's uh, ironic in conclusive and fragmentary of the things. So let's start. Uh, we start from the first, our first case, Olga Ravrentiva Shuv, the monochrome 2050 page graphic novel in genre Gothic Detective, was published in 2016 and immediately became a significant event for, uh, for the Russian comics industry. So, what is the Shuv? Shuv, this is abbreviation from uh, Shlomov Killed Vasya. In Russian, Shlomov Ubiu Vasyu. One of the version of this, what had happened uh, with author and his brother's village near board, Vasily, Vasily Shlomovim in 1998. Vasily was a 26-year-old veterinarian and drug addict who mm, mysterious suicide uh, has triggered Olga and her brother, mm, teenager, curiosity to image what truly has happened with Vasya and was it is a suicide at all or maybe he was shot by his father so they started to making um, making picture with different version of uh, the incident which has become a part of book shoe years later Alfred Schutz's theory gives us the opportunity to highlight several life worlds of the Shuv novel. Each of them represent the images as well as the atmosphere of 90s in this way, this own way. The first life world is a world of child uh, children's games in political terrorists, businessmen, bandits, in uh, which kids were played in 1997-1998, before and after Vasya death. Dead. Uh, games which are based on the, uh, on the news agenda of the time full of contract killings taken uh, hostage by Chechen separatists, mafia activities and political instability. And uh, kids' toys, teddy bears and Barbie dolls are imagined as acting in these role models. Yes, this, this we can see this uh, small part of this. And the second wor life world, it's uh, daily life, kids uh, 
at this world, 90s are represented through the various material artifacts, such as uh, books given kings uh, and uh, eclectic coexistent orthodox icons and uh, Soviet symbols. And also we witness degrad um, degradate family relationship illustrated by Shlomo's strategy when um, introverted uh, teen turns into junkie and thus uh, it's hates by his parents who view him as a black sheep. Uh, the point is the marriage of his parents in early 70s is shown to us as, as a medallions cursed by pregnancy and uh, all their subsequent family life is uh, totally riddled with verbal and psychological abuse. Thus, Vasya has been a victim of family surrounding uh, for all of uh, his life till his death and after. Here we come to the third life world novel, Afterlife. At this level, Vasya awakens after the, his death and is desperately trying to get back home to see his parents. Not on this first try, but he finally manages to, la uh, to leave the cemetery and uh, starts his mysterious road trip of a dead man. Uh, he witnessed uh, the ongoing guerrilla war between dead bandits and uh, death Russian Soviet partisan. The first representing the evil were killed in the 90s, the second representing force of good were killed in World War II. So we see that even in afterlife, gangsters as a new masters of life are misery destroying heroic Soviet past. Here in the post-Soviet present is waging war against the Soviet past. Finally, Vasya, as a ghost, managing, um, manages uh, to come and see his parents as a window and uh, witness their usually curial, their agreement um, to forget him and uh, the day of his death forever. They see and don't recognize him. His father tries to shoot him. The Vasya ghost escape, but there is no place from him in hearts and minds of his parents. And he returns to cemetery. And here we have turn to prove prof to Professor Atkin uh, warping morning stories of the undead in the land of unbreeding book. As Atkin points out, if the suffering is not remembered, it will be repeated. If you do not mourn the death, they, like ghosts, will terrify in the living. If the loss in is uh, not Acknowledged, it threatens to return strange forms. Thus, this particular combination of old and strange is eerie. In Freud theory, eerie is the sacred native being um, repressed and returned later. Freud formulation um, Defines, de, uh, defines the area as a special form of memory closely associated with fear. Area is a combination of memory and fear. And uh, as Atkin says, area is the weird which has become familiar and the ghostly is the familiar which has become alienated. Our central point in this uh, if Atkin postulates the post-Soviet Russia warped it morning is uh, cased by oblivion towards Stalin's terror, Olga Laurentiev has created a masterpiece illustrated the concept of area which based not on Soviet but post-Soviet history and memory. Thus, not 30s, 40s or 50, but 90s are represented as a mythologized place 
as of a struggle between Hermaros and Oblivion. So, the next case of 90s representation in Russian comics books um, deals with the Vitaly Torletsky um, and Kirill Chakrai duology Jojo Bizarre Adventure. And this, uh, we should see in the second part of this um, these books, uh, Dashing, uh, in Russian, Lehia, it's uh, another uh, name of 90s. The first part uh, takes place in 2007, but the second book is a prequel. Uh, we find out uh, the truth about the past of the first part antagonist Dmitry Brandov and the main character Georgi Jodin. During the first part, Jodin's son, Jordan Jr., believes that his father was a hero policeman, but Brandov tells him that his father was a fellow in the gang as well. So, Dashin tells the story of two high school friends growing up in late 80s and early 90s. Georgi Jordan, excellent high school student born in 1973, left his girlfriend in 1991 to serve in the army. When he returns in 1993, he finds out that the world has drastically changed. He um, desperately tries to find a job, being not ready to get a new prestigious and well-paid jobs, uh, he finally become a policeman. That, um, then he finds out uh, that his closest friend, Brandov, born in 1972, has not only become a gangster, but married his girlfriend and has a son from her. Despite first negative reaction, soon Jodin decided to enter the um, friend's criminal activity and hear the story of two uh, breaking bed process starts full of ultraviolence clashing with other bandits and um, reading, reading ending with Jodin death and brand of imprisonment. So the novel enters the territory of uh, Volkov Vadim Volkov, violent entrepreneur, the use of force in the making of Russian capitalism book. So, but the most important uh, uh, point uh, of this novel is not uh, even that the father of the kids, Jodin, not Brandov, but the, the uh, state security service controls and manages gangster swars. Um, thus, young uh, thugs, uh, Jodin and Brandov, are viewed by them as a problem. So, the real problem is not um, banditry and dysfunctional of the state, but the real um, strong station of security forces manage the violent entrepreneurship at the highest level of control. Chaos turns out to be a leader, not only for oceanate criminal youth, youth, but uh, for security officers as well, uh, as well as shoes in dashing are represents through family dysfunctionality, thus time not in post-Soviet low middle class, but gangster high middle high class. And um, in the first novel, uh, Jodin Jr. Um, def defeats Brandov, but uh, admits that he don't know anymore how the truth about fathers look like. The theology argues the subsequent two thousands are fundamentally based on violent experience previous decade and uh, secondly that we have live in post truth towards the history uh, towards this historical period that is why we are doomed to endless discussion about 90s 
The final case of our study is uh, stories from Ruleva 71-72, Dilogy created and produced by comic book writer and YouTube blogger Denis Optimister Kalmikov. The books were conceived both of homage from the cult Tales from the Crypt series and children horror stories of the 90s. Moreover, this is a successful attempt to imagine how such horror books would look like if they had been created by Russian writers and said, and, and Russian settings had been placed in uh, Russian 90s reality. So the action take place in Russian regional cities. Uh, each of uh, the book consists of a multitude of scary stories united in one meta story, settings in which stories are told. Being limited in time, we decide to tell two stories that refer to topics uh, presented in Jojo and Shuv. So, uh, in the first story, Blood, Blood, uh, Friendship Bubblegum, uh, Night is represented through a criminal uh, value orientation which children raising up in criminal provincial surroundings uh, interrise non critically and uh, the main protagonists uh, conflict uh, with this scale promoted by his bandit's father and interrise by his uh, younger brother when the protagonist uh, understands uh, that all his conflict management skills towards um, revival, uh, revival gangs can't prevent his brother from getting into real trouble sooner or later he um, decides to kill himself by knife given by ghost kiosk seller who was actually burned alive with the, his kiosk after refused to pay money for their father and his brother. Uh, thus self-sacrifice um, service as a violent self-destructing refuse by to be recruited into violent entrepreneurship. And the last story, Jack Art, uh, resonates with the the Atkins concept of eerie and Laurentiva understanding of 90s. Soviet present, uh, Soviet past present is uh, uh, in degraded public space and ruined sculpture of children literature heroes returned to post Soviet playground as a monster and eerie. So, author formulates a conservative nostalgic myth about the golden age of Soviet past and rusty post-Soviet present. So that we see the area, very famous character, uh, Russian cartoons, Gene Crocodile and Cheburashka, steal and uh, torture kids, making them live in debt as an attempt to make friends. So, how does generation born, eight, born in the 80s represent childhood of 90s? Um, first of all, all cases has, can be seen as a requiem to the last generation of Soviet youths born in the 1970s. Representations uh, and reflection nostalgia uh, for the 90s is uh, directed to the fact that war, terrorism, uh, political instability are becoming a routine daily life. Uh, all comics are associated with the uh, degradation of fami uh, familia and the intergenerational deride. Children are left of their own while of their own, while the uh, parents are forced to give uh, all their uh, life power to survive. Uh, the 90s are characterized by, uh, by a harsh division into the degradation of the Soviet and the 
worship of the westernized material culture culture uh, and uh, finally the area for comics can be drawn from post-soviet fierce and uh, reversed sovietness thank you very much for your attention with that to answer of your question.